Hello everyone, this is Michael Saltzman. I'm the Director of Digital Products at Blue Sky Bio. I wanted to make this video to demonstrate the updated process flow for creating a conventional crown in the latest version of Blue Sky Plan, version 4.7.52. The most significant update is that you can now use the software to design the crown and also export it to both an STL file and also to generate an XML configuration file that can be used for milling the crown in a milling machine. So with this update of Blue Sky Plan, you could design the crown, you can export it as an STL, but you could also create an XML configuration file to be milled in a milling machine. This functionality is currently free and is going to stay free for quite a long time. Before we jump into the software, I wanted to bring your attention to blueskyplan.com, the education section that can be accessed by scrolling down slightly or by clicking education in the top horizontal toolbar. Clicking on a particular module will give you access to training tutorials such as these, as well as sample data files that you can use to follow along to the actual training tutorials. For those of you that would like assistance either with the planning of a digital plan or fabricating the actual physical part, I recommend going to labpronto.com where you can outsource any of your digital lab needs, whether it's the planning, whether it's the physical fabrication, or the entire case, surgical guides, aligners, dentures, crowns, bridges, and much more. All of that can be accessed via labpronto.com. And there's a network of top tier labs behind Lab Pronto who are waiting to fulfill your order. To get started designing a conventional crown, simply click on crown and bridge, select the option for conventional crown. And yes, we have options here for titanium based crown, as well as designing a bridge. The software will automatically prompt you to load the relevant data set. There are shortcut buttons on the top to access the desktop documents, downloads, and your network. I'm going to click desktop, select the data set that I have for the conventional crown, and I'm going to multi-select by left clicking on one jaw, holding down the shift key, and then left, left clicking on the second jaw. Clicking OK button will load the models into the software. The software automatically brings up the model alignment screen. Since I'm going to be creating a crown for the upper jaw, I'm going to click upper jaw, select the relevant model, go ahead and select maxilla in the top right corner and partial since this is a partial jaw. I'm going to click continue to alignment on the bottom right. To align the models correctly, I'm going to follow the diagram in the top right. Hold down the shift key and left click on one of the cusps on the lingual side. Mark the second point with the shift key and left click as close to the mesial of the model as possible. And mark the third point again towards the back on one of the buckle cusps. The software now automatically aligns the model to the grid. We could toggle the grid on and off and rotate to see the alignment. The next step allows us to fine tune the model alignment as needed. We could go ahead and grab and drag the widget if we would like to rotate that. We also have the option of clicking show all to see all of the models and we could rotate and move them together if we like and to toggle on and off the grid and the widget. Pressing finish will load the models into the case. We now have the models imported, aligned, and positioned in the Blue Sky Plan software. We could see how the models are oriented the same way as the head in the bottom left. And now I'm going to click Continue to Crown Design. On the right side of the screen, I'm going to select the restoration type, conventional crown, and I will select the relevant jaw. In our situation, that's a maxilla. In the drop down menu, I'm going to confirm the selection of the relevant models. The model that we're dealing with is the upper jaw, the antagonist is the lower jaw. We do have multiple ways of creating the conventional crown. What I'm going to demonstrate now is the process flow where the crown should not be positioned prior to starting the process. But if you do want to place the crown manually, either in the previous step or in this step, then you could go ahead and do so, and then select the crown from the drop-down list. But we'll demonstrate that in a different video. 
For now, I'm going to confirm the model selection. The model is the upper jaw. The antagonist is the lower jaw. We have maxilla selected correctly. Conventional crown. We're good to go. So I'm going to press the start button. The first step is to define the margin. That's simply done by holding down the shift key and clicking to place dots with your left mouse button. And as you place the dots, the software goes ahead and connects the dots, creating the curve. I'm holding down the wheel of my mouse to grab and move the model, or I could rotate by holding down my left mouse button and dragging the mouse. I'm going to continue with the process of holding down the shift key and left clicking until I go all the way around. And when I get to the last point, I'm going to continue holding down the shift, sorry, holding down the left mouse button and dragging it until it closes with the original dot that I placed. If I want to fine tune the placement of this curve at any point, I could simply hold down the shift key, left mouse button, hold and drag, and it will redraw the curve accordingly. Once I'm done drawing the margin, I, I press the next button, and we are defining the insertion direction. We could do so by using the widget and modifying the direction of the arrow, or we could position the view on the screen and then click set insertion direction from view. We are able to tolerate undercuts if you would like to do so just by using the slider and grabbing and dragging that. At this point, I'm going to click next and move on to step three of the process where I'm going to mark the proximal areas. Hold down the shift key and drag with your left mouse button to mark the adjacent tooth. If you are missing an adjacent tooth, then just mark the tooth that does exist. We now have a series of sliders to edit the crown bottom. The crown cement spacer is the distance or the offset between the bottom of the crown and the model underneath. No cement gap is the height of the crown where there is no spacer or offset. So right now the bottom millimeter of the base of the crown has zero separation between the model and the bottom of the crown. And then we have different sliders to edit and change the base of the crown. We have a minimal thickness slider on the bottom and the option to hide minimal thickness if the minimal thickness is violated and we check the checkbox then we will not see the minimal thickness. At this point, I'm going to keep the defaults as they are and go ahead and click on next. The software now asks us to select the relevant tooth. We have a variety of different tooth libraries that you could choose from. Go ahead and left click on the relevant tooth, select the general size in the bottom left, and then click the OK button. The software has placed the tooth automatically. We could see the red indication indicating that our minimal thickness has been violated. And we could go ahead and use different editing tools to modify or edit the shape of the tooth. So we have add remove, which does simply that. You could hold down the shift key and use your left mouse button to add material. Control and left mouse button to remove material. We have the smooth button that could smooth out any area. We also have local deform. And what local deform could do, especially if you make the tool size larger, is you could hold down the shift key and kind of extrude the entire tooth, keeping the shape more or less intact. You could raise up the surface of the tooth. We also have the ability on the model for the opposing arch, we can mark it as visible and we could see the tooth and how it interacts and intersects with the opposing arch. So now we could go ahead and use our tools. It gives us a full range of capability of editing the tooth. So what I'm doing now is I'm just holding down the control key on the keyboard using my left mouse button and I'm able to kind of shave away slightly at the top of the tooth to reduce the amount of intersection or collision. So using our surfaces and our different editing tools and the tool size and the tool strength, 
we could really go ahead and edit and design and create the tooth exactly how we want it to be. We also have the ability to right click on a model and click toggle transparency. So for example, if we wanted to adjust and take care of the minimal thickness violation that we could see right here, I could now go to local deform, for example, and then use the tool to take care of that. Or I could add a bit of material, hold down the shift key, my left mouse button and take care of it. And if we wouldn't have taken care of it, then the software automatically, when it created the base of the crown, it would have made sure that we had the minimal thickness of material that was there. We can finish up the process by clicking next. And in our last step, the software showing the contacts, we could choose to leave them as is. We can now choose to continue using the editing tools to edit them, or we could check the checkboxes to cut occlusion intersections or cut the proximal intersections, in which case the software will just cut them away. So we have the different options of either addressing it ourselves, leaving the contacts as they are, or having the software cut that. For now, I'm going to uncheck these checkboxes click next to finish up the process. So now we've finished creating the crown. We could switch over to teeth surfaces. We could see our crown that we've just created here as the custom crown. If we want to rename it, we could give it a different name. If we turn off the model, then we could go ahead and rotate and see the crown that we have just generated. And now we have the ability with the export button that came up automatically here in the design panel to click export. And here we have our custom crown that we could go ahead and export. What we wanna make sure is to check the checkbox for cam, which will generate to the XML configuration file. When I click on export, the software opens up the directory of my computer and asks where I want to save the file. For this demonstration purpose, let's go ahead and save it on the desktop. Let's make a new folder. Crown export, select to save it there and go ahead and click on OK. Let's check our crown export. And here we have two things. We have our STL file as the custom crown, and we also have the construction file that can be used to mill this crown. As I said, initially this functionality of designing the crowns and exporting the STL file and the construction file, these are free functionalities and they are going to stay free for quite a while. So go ahead and enjoy Create as many crowns as you like, design them, export them, mill them. Have a great time. Thank you very much.